Hello and welcome to today's class on understanding geography with diagrams. Today we'll be talking about your soil. Today we have three topics to discuss. First of all is your soil horizon, soil forming processes and the factors affecting your soil formation. Now I have also mentioned the reference book that I have followed to prepare this notes. First I have followed my own notes. Second I have used the WD Thornbury book. Next, I have used the book on Rupa Made Simple. Last but not the least is your NCERT. Let's start. First of all, is what is soil? See, the simple and the most simple definition is that the soil is nothing but the topmost layer of your lithosphere, and which is nothing but a dynamic complex of the mixture of your minerals and humus. Remember that soil is not only the thing that we find in the continent; it is also found in the ocean floor. but the texture and the composition is quite different next now the minerals are sourced from the disintegration of the rocks by the process of weathering and gradation i have already uploaded the video on the weathering please do watch the weathering video to understand more now let's begin with the soil horizon now what exactly is the soil horizon see whenever you see the soil that is on the surface of the earth it's basically vertically divided into different layer and this soil horizon is nothing but the discussion of the layers of the soil this particular question can be a mark can be a 10 marker can be a 20 marker or a 12 marker question now let's see see first of all the top most layer of the soil is called as the a horizon again a horizon is divided into a double o a o a1 a2 and a3 remember this that first of all you need to draw the entire diagram once you have drawn the diagram itself then it becomes very easy to understand there is no need for mugging up anything just simply understand the thing see first of all is the a00 and the ao horizon like it is written in the a00 horizon it is undecomposed organic debris and in the ao horizon it is written partially decomposed organic debris now look at this undecomposed and partially decomposed now all of you must have heard the name of humus now humus is formed after the organic matter has been decomposed by your bacteria now as you can see this a00 and ao horizon are undecomposed and partially decomposed hence from this we can make out that they are less fertile it's simple next let's go for the a horizon see the a horizon is characterized by the fine textured mineral humus rich fertile soil incorporating maximum biological activity again i say that a horizon is characterized by the fine texture what is fine texture means they have very small texture means minute texture again they are rich in mineral comma mineral and humus and rich fertile soil which is incorporating maximum biological activity means this particular layer it has the maximum biological activity hence what do we find in this layer is a mixture of organic that is your humus mineral matters partially elevation i'll explain you what does elevation means of clay and sequi oxides what is sequi oxides as i have written fe and al if you understand the meaning of fe and al then i would request you to give me the, the give me the particular minerals name in the comment box next see we have the a1 in the a1 horizon we have the dark colored decay organic and then we have the a2 horizon we have the a2 horizon as it says is the light colored decayed organic means as you can see that as we go from the top to bottom the color gradually fades out next now with respect to a1 it is the a1 that represents the fully developed soil with absolute perfect texture of humus so what we got is that from along or from um, uh, from the among all this we have the a1 horizon that is the true soil next transportation of material from the genetic horizon of a to the genetic horizon b is called elevation so basically what does it means transportation of materials again i have already said materials are nothing but your minerals your humus that is present in the a horizon and when when water is deposited in the a horizon what it does is that it percolates to the b horizon and this form of percolation where the material is transferred from a 
to be is nothing but called your elevation hence this a zone is called your the elevation or the washed out zone what does washed out zone means that minerals and humus are washed out into your b horizon simple next let's move on to the b horizon the b horizon as you can see starts from b1 b2 b3 and this too if you want to mention so far so good it doesn't if you have not mentioned is also good but if it is present in your diagram it's good very good next because diagram itself shows your understanding next in the b horizon is nothing but your subsoil what is subsoil soil which is beneath the top soil it's called subsoil sub water or the sub surface water is nothing but the water which is beneath your surface water sub surface water is also called your ground water i hope you got the meaning of your subsoil now b horizon is the subsoil which is humusless but rich in minerals why we have the complete mineral deposits in this zone then we have the b1 horizon the b1 horizon is a fine textured transition soil between b2 and ba3 as you can see it's a transition soil between your b2, uh, b2 and a3 this is your b1 now b2 b2 is called the true subsoil and has the maximum accumulation of clay pan and hard pan what is this see this b2 horizon is we call it the actually the zone of elevation means it is this horizon what happens is that the entire material from the a horizon is deposited in the b horizon as you can see i have written the cp oxides that is coming from the a horizon is deposited in the b horizon you can see also the cp oxides over here in the a1 horizon and look at this cp oxides in the b horizon cp oxides from a to b is transferred via leaching again about leaching we'll study further next b2 next comes is b3 b3 is characterized as your coarse texture now we'll study about the b horizon now the b horizon is called as the zone of elevation or the washed in zone what is the zone of elevation zone of elevation means simply look at this that into the zone first of all we have materials which is being transferred from a and we have materials which are transferred from the c now materials which are being transferred from the a is done via percolation what is percolation is the downward movement and material that is moving from c to b is through a capillary action this is what we have described see b horizon is called the zone of elevation as there is both concentration of materials via percolation and capillary action i have drawn a flow chart for your understanding see this is your a horizon b horizon c horizon material from a to b comes via percolation where in the wet climate and during the dry climate what happens moves from c to b via capillary action next last but not least we have last two horizon that is your c and your d horizon c it says that your c horizon is also the support horizon and is related to parent rocks is sourcing of the soil composition see basically your d horizon is the horizon of your parent rock parent rock means that particular rock from which the soil derives its mineral its composition and texture and it is d horizon which forms the parent rocks and this is the base of the soil profile it is this rock from which the soil attains its mineral composition so from this we got that this it is this horizon from which the soil gets its mineral composition now let's let me give you an example see in india we have the black soil now the black soil prevails in this zone in the maharashtra and the kathiawad peninsula now this maharashtra and the kathiawad peninsula is nothing but the zone where the basaltic rocks are found or the basaltic magma has been deposited as a result of this black soil is developed and the black soil derives its mineral from this nothing but your basaltic rocks hence the basaltic rocks are actually nothing but your d horizon which helps uh, in your maharashtra and your kathiawad pen and the kathiawad peninsula and it is this black soil that helps in the cultivation of the cotton crops next let's come to the soil forming processes again the soil forming processes i have taken the reference of rupa made simple now why i am saying that i have taken this reference because i do not want you to go again reading this books rather i am saying that i have done the hard work for you please take down the notes next 
principal soil processes includes weathering sorry principal soil forming processes i think i have left the forming principal soil forming processes includes your weathering translocation organic changes glaying porzolization and desilication let us understand each and every processes one by one the first process is your translocation what is this translocation translocation is nothing but movement of several kinds of movement within the soil body we have already learned about two types of translocation one was the percolation another was the capillary action next first of all is the leaching or the leucinization leaching is nothing but the downward movement of material in the form of solution or the colloidal suspension example is your humus now how now remember this the leaching that i said that moving that when the minerals and the uh, humus that is moving from a to b or sorry the minerals that is moving from a to b occurs because of your leaching next we have elevation i hope you have already i have already said about the elevation is nothing but the physical downward washing of the clay and other fine particles is known as elevation but what is the difference between the leaching and elevation see in leaching what happens that downward movements of the material in the form of solution or colloidal suspension but in the elevation what happens physical downward washing means the they are totally washed into the downward layer means the bigger materials are washed into the downward layer but over here in the leaching what happens that they form actually the solution or the colloidal suspension next we have the elevation elevation is nothing but the zone of deposition horizon b again we have the capillary action what is this capillary action is the upward movement of the soil solution in the arid and the semi arid environment example sorry especially calcium this is also called as your cal calcification see however in the extreme cases what happens where evaporation is very intense calcium or sodium salt may form a whitish crust as the soil surface in the soil surface and harm which becomes harmful to the plant and such is called as the alkanization or your salinization at present such is taking place in the northwest india in punjab and rajasthan ganganagar haryana due to excessive irrigation practice see i'll explain you this see what happens is that sorry yes let's draw to your india map see in this particular region what happens that these regions receive 50 cm of rainfall only hence this regions are very semi arid region but what happens in this region is that this regions are the regions of your first generation green revolution hence the irrigation facility is very good as a result of this since due to the heavy irrigation in the soils see this is your soil and as the soil is irrigated heavily and then it's due to the temperature the so the water evaporates what it happens is that it basically generally facilitates your capillary action as a result of which the salt or the salt that comes from beneath the soil gets deposited on the top soil and as a result the top soil gets infertile recently the application of the gypsum has been used in the northwest india so as to reduce your salinity or the salt in the or the sorry salt deposition in your farmer farm fields next is your organic changes see three things that you are going to see first of all you are going to see a see about humus next is about decomposition of humus and let's see the formation of mineralization see let's understand this flow chart accumulation of the organic material in the soil it's very easy to understand what is this organic material nothing but your leaf litter dead organisms etc then these are decomposed who decomposes them bacteria fungi algae next this decomposition leads to your formation of your humus and this process is called your humification so what is humification humification is the process by which humus is formed by the action of decomposition of organic material simple now when this humus is further decomposed yes the humus again goes under decomposition it leads to the form it leads to mineralization means the decomposition of the humus what it leads that in the minerals that are stored within the humus are directly brought into the soil as a result of which the soil is rich in minerals but it becomes it lacks humus next 1 2 3 means your decomposition humus or the humification and mineralization are not separate process rather are accompanied means 
with the formation of humus, then only decomposition, then only mineralization. And these three processes are not separate. Next is we have porzolization or gelovation. I have already talked about gelovation over there in the weathering. Next, but let, let now let's look at it. See, the porzolization or the gelovation, what happens is that the top soil is rich in silica, SI. It's rich in silica, but other minerals are absent. Why? See, first of all, in this topsoil, what happens is that there is aluminum, so there is iron, aluminum and silica. But the silica remains deposit, uh, deposition is more. Why? See, majority of this podzol soil are formed in your temperate region where there is the prevalence of your deciduous tree. And this deciduous tree have a whole lot of silica within themselves. And when what happens is that when there is a little bit of rainfall or anything, this iron and aluminum, what they do is that they readily undergo your process of uh, leaching. But the silica is slowly released, slowly decomposed by the dead materials of your this deciduous tree. As this dead materials of the deciduous tree are decomposed, silica is released very, very slowly. As a result, the soil becomes rich in silica, but other minerals, they lack. See, it also says that key, it is poorest, yes, it says that the gelating, uh, yes, let's move on from starting. The differential solubility of the minerals, as we have explained, results in the formation of the layer rich in silica. With each, with the ash gray appearance, means the soil looks like an ash gray color. Such situation is caused due to the gelating agent present in the conifer needles. This gelating agent what happens is that they slowly and slowly decompose. Poor, again, it is poorest in the deciduous trees. They are, f wait, yes, it is poorest in the deciduous trees. They are found throughout the world in different acidic condition except your tundra. Sorry, it is not poorest. They are the richest in the deciduous trees. Oh, sorry, yes. They are the, sorry, it is that key. They are present in your conifers. They are present in the conifer needles and your heath plant. But they are poorest in the deciduous trees. Conifers are nothing but your pine trees. The pine trees have certain needles within them. And these needles are very much rich in your uh, this silica. And that is the very reason that this gelovation and the podzolization soil is rich in silica but not rich in other minerals. Next we have laterization or desilication. See, laterization or desilication is nothing but your complete reverse of what we have learned means in the laterization or desilication occurs in the humid tropics number one we heard that key porzolization occurs where in the temperate climate laterization and desilication occurs in your humid tropics where silica is removed through percolation hence the soil is rich in aluminium and iron that's why the soil is completely red in color and such soil are also called as the ferrosol f-e-r-r-o s-o-l these are called ferrosol, means soil which is rich in iron. They are also characterized by the lack of organic matter. What is this organic matter? It's nothing but your humus. Next is your glaine. What is this glaine? See, when the soil in wet water logged condition, first of all, your soil is in wet or water logged condition, it results to your anaerobic condition. And this anaerobic condition leads to your proliferation of a specialized bacteria. And this bacteria uses up your humus and this bacteria again it reduce and reduction of the iron that is fe iron that is from ferric to ferrous state i hope you got the process of the glaying and this basically the glaying what happens is that the soil that is developed is also called your peat bog soil next soil and this soil is characterized that is glade soil is characterized by the bluish gray color number one again a gray horizon occurs in the zone of permanent ground water saturation. Next is the factors controlling the soil formation. First of all, the factor is your parent rock. Now, the parent rock is a passive factor. We'll discuss about the passive and active at the end. But remember that the parent rock is a passive factor. Parent rock affects the texture and fertility. Texture how? See, I have taken two examples. One example is of sandstone, another example is of shell. Sandstone and shell both are sedimentary rocks. However, in the sandstone, what happens is that whenever the soil is formed, oh, this is sandstone, and if the soil is formed over the sandstone, then it has coarsed 
textured soil coarse texture means the texture is quite thick and the soil which is formed with the help of uh, in the shell at their base are fine grain or fine texture fertility fertility we have the calcareous and the basalt rock in the calcareous it is the red gina that is the calcium rich soil and the basalt rock it's the rego that is your black soil next again we have the climate now the climate is a very active factor climate affects the soil by two process one is your precipitation that is i have written ppt another is your temperature see what happens in the high temperature or where there is high precipitation in the high precipitation zone the soil that is developed is the pedalfer soil and it is has a high rate of leaching what is pedalfer soil we'll talk about in the class of the discussion on the different types of soil and the regions where there is a low precipitation there we develop is a bed call soil because of less leaching so from this difference itself you can get that here we have the less leaching bed call soil we have the high rate of leaching so from this you can guess that the bed call soil is more fertile than your pedalfer soil your pedalfer soil is nothing but your forest soil we have your long grass soil these are your pedalfer soil and this bed call soil is nothing but your steppy soil or your black uh, steppy soil or your chernozem is the form of the soil formed is called the bed call soil next temperature now wherever there is a high temperature what happens is that bacterial action is very high and as a result the soil has less humus example is your laterite soil peat bog soil again where the temperature is low bacterial action is very slow and then the soil has more humus next we have the biotic factor again this biotic factor is an active factor now biotic factor basically we have taken the example of a vegetation that is the uh, your trees and plants we have the animals which also includes your human see when the biotic factor organisms affect the soil development range okay from the microscopic bacteria to large mammal including animal in the vegetation itself see vegetation what it does is that it adds humus to the soil number 1 and it prevents the soil erosion with the help of roots number 3 they per counteract percolation by transpiration and last but not least plants help in translocation of the essential minerals like the calcium magnesium from the lower layer to the top layer of the soil simple is that yeah i need you to explain this two points second third point is that the counteract percolation by transpiration means this is your plant see plant actually what happens that whenever the rain water percolates the soil or the rain water reaches the soil the plants actually absorb the water number one number two is that they hold on to the soil number three is that they carry on the transpiration by which the water is uh, transmitted to the atmosphere through their leaves hence they basically maintain your soil fertility that is they counteract percolation by transpiration percolation means they prevent leaching next is your animal now animal in now influence of animal on the soil is both mechanical and chemical example understand the earthworm now this is the earthworm the earthworm whatever when it uh, when it passes through this soil what it does is that it burrows the soil as a burrows means making holes within the soil that is nothing but your mechanical uh, that is your mechanical uh, the mechanical process of soil that is affects them mechanically and then we have the chemical means whenever the earthworm injects the soil and again it drops out the soil it uh, it changes the chemical composition of soil it actually adds the minerals and certain things into the soil and makes it rich in minerals let's say it's written again the earthworm burrows through the soil loosening it hence mechanically affecting it but also changes the texture and composition by passing it through its body next is your topography again your topography is nothing but your passive factor in the topography we have a slope angle now if it is a steep slope this is your steep slope this is your gentle slope gentle slope steep slope now in case of a steep slope what happens is more susceptible to erosion and the layer of soil is thin in case of a flat top hill what happens that the layer of the soil first of all is thick number 1 see the layer of soil is thick and as as well as that they act as the source area it simply means that if this is the flat top hill there is a layer of soil over here 
now this soil is obviously thick but this will also act as the source area for the uh, for the soil for the other regions next is your drainage soil on the hill sides are better drained than those of the valleys it's simple next is that exposure to sun see the sun facing slope have different soil than the sun opposed slope let us take the example of a himalaya now the southern himalaya is nothing but your sun facing whereas the northern himalaya means the himalayas not not uh, or to the northern himalayas they are your not sun facing hence the himalayas which are the sun facing himalayas they will actually what will happen is that they will actually promote the growth of your flora and fauna hence the soil texture on the sun facing slope is quite different than the on the opposite side next is that we have your time factor now time is an active factor now i have written the statement it is very difficult to ascertain the precise role of time in the soil formation since soil varies greatly in their rate of development on porous material such as sandstone soil formation is more rapid than the imperial material impermeable material what is this impermeable material impermeable material is that such material which do not allows the water to penetrate through it but remember that uh, porous materials are those materials such as your sandstone that allows water to penetrate through it next on glacial tills a few hundred years may be enough to form a soil this is another example it says that glacial tills what is this glacial till see glacial soils are also formed by the erosion carried out by your alpine glaciers or your continental glaciers and this glacial tills uh, that a few hundred years means within a short span of time comma there may be enough form in that enough soil would be formed whereas more time would be required in case of a dense basalt i have already talked about basalt which is present in the maharashtra and the kathiawar peninsula actually what happens is that it takes more time to erode the basalt than it takes time for the glacier to erode the other surfaces or the mountain surfaces hence from this you got that the factors is of two type one is your active another one is your passive active factor is your time climate biotic and your passive factor is your parent material and your topography this can be your prelims type of question thank you that will be all for today's class